everyone. So today we will evaluate this integral, namely the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of square root of 1 plus x plus the square root of 1 minus x, all with respect to x. And I took this integral because it involves quite a few nice algebraic tricks, well, to solve it. So let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the argument of our logarithm, namely, let me do this in your head, square root of 1 plus x plus square root of 1 minus x. And now, what happens if we square this quantity? So we get 1, well, this square plus this square, which is 1 plus x plus 1 minus x, which is just 2 because the x cancels. And then we have plus n2 times their product. So the square root of 1 plus x times 1 minus x, which is square root of 1 minus x squared. And now, if we take the square root on both sides, we, we get this, and we can factor out the square root of 2 to get square root of 2, square root of 1 plus square root of 1 minus x squared. And then if we take the natural log, I should have made more space to fit this in. Now, if we take the natural log of everything, first of all, we can factor out the 1 half, and then we can split this natural log into two natural logs using natural log properties. So we get 1 half natural log of 2 plus 1 half natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. I was about to say the x, but we're not in an interval right now. Okay, so now we can, well, plug this into our interval and split it into two smaller intervals. So we get 1 half natural log of 2 times the interval from 0 to 1 of 1 dx, which is just 1, so I'll leave it as it currently is, plus 1 half interval from 0 to 1 of natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And now we'll introduce a trigonometric substitution, namely we'll let x be the sine of theta, which means dx will be cosine theta d theta. And, and yeah, we, we cannot plug everything in, so we get 1 half natural log of 2 plus 1 half integral from arc sine of 0 is 0, arc sine of 1 is pi over 2, natural log of 1 plus cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. And now, let's take a look at this natural log of 1 plus cosine theta. So, natural log of 1 plus cosine theta, what we'll do to it is we'll subtract and then add natural log of sine theta. And now why is this useful? Well, we can combine these two logarithms using logarithmic properties to get, okay, 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta, and then cosine theta over sine theta is cotangent of theta, and then plus natural log of sine theta, is, if that is right, yeah, that should be right. And now, if we plug everything in, it will also split, multiply by cosine, and then split this integral into two smaller integrals. We get 1 half natural log of 2 plus 1 half integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta times cosine theta d theta, and then plus 1 half integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine theta, cosine theta, d theta. And now all that is left is to evaluate each of these integrals separately. So we will call this integral right here i1, that's supposed to be a 1, and what color should I use for the second one? Let's use red. And for the second one, we'll call it i2. Okay. And also, I will erase this part right here. 
to make some more space. Okay, good. So now let's start with our I1. I1 is, well, we'll use integration by parts for this one. So we will differentiate natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta, and we'll integrate cosine theta. Integral of cosine theta is sine theta. But then for this part, well, we get all over, one over cosecant theta plus cotangent theta because of the natural log. And then derivative of cosecant theta is negative cosecant theta plus cotangent, negative cosecant theta cotangent theta, sorry. And then minus cosecant squared theta like this. And now if, if we factor out negative cosecant theta, so we get negative cosecant theta times, and then here we get cotangent theta plus cosecant theta over cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. And this cancels out to one, and we're simply left with negative cosecant theta. So now we can integrate this, and we have natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta times sine theta evaluated at zero and pi over two minus, well, mi plus, because we have minus minus, integral from zero to pi over two of, well, cosecant x times sine x is just, well, one. So we have integral from zero to pi over two of one d theta, which is just one eva x evaluated at zero and pi over two, which is just pi over two. And now for this part right here. If we plug in pi over 2, sine theta is 1. Cosecant of pi over 2 is 1. Cotangent of pi over 2 is, is 0, so the inside goes to 1. Natural log of 1 is 0, so at 0, this vanishes. But then at 0, sine of 0 is 0. But cosecant theta uh, at 0 is infinity. Same thing for cotangent theta, which means we have natural log of infinity, which is infinity times zero situation, which means we'll have to use limits. So the limit as theta approaches zero of, well, well it's from the positive branch because, well, it's an integral. I'll write it as natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta divided by cosecant theta, like this. It's basically one over one over cosecant theta. Because now we have an infinity over infinity situation, which means we can safely use Lupita's rule. So we have the limit as theta approaches zero of, okay, derivative of this is negative cosecant theta, as we found out right there. Derivative of cosecant theta is negative cosecant theta cotangent theta. Negative cosecant theta cancels out with negative cosecant theta. And we're left with the limit as theta approaches zero of one over cotangent theta, which is just tangent theta, but then tangent of zero is zero, so we just get zero, which means this vanishes, and we're only left with pi over two. Well, I don't want the answer in because it's not the final answer. And now for I2. So what we'll do is first we'll introduce a substitution and we will let u be sine theta, which means du will be cosine theta d theta. And now we get the integral from sine of zero is zero, sine of pi over two is one, natural log of u du. And now to integrate this, we can use integration by parts. So we'll differentiate natural log of u and we'll integrate, well, one. This is what I, what I like to call the lazy integration by parts. Like you differentiate or integrate the function, well, you differentiate the function itself and you integrate one. Okay, so integral of one is u, derivative of natural log of u is one over u. So we get u natural log of u evaluated at zero and one minus integral from zero to one of. Okay, and then one over u times u is one, so we have one du. But then integral from zero to one of one is just one, so we can just write it like this. And then for this part, 
at 1, we get 1 times natural log of 1, which is 1 times 0, which is 0. But at 0, we get 0 times negative infinity, which is an indeterminate form. But you, uh, but you is linear and natural log of u is a logarithm. And since linears tend to grow faster than logarithms, this will vanish. And we are left with negative 1. Therefore, our original integral, which we will call i for the sake of clarity, and let me also make a little box right there. Therefore, our integral i is equal to, okay, so we have, let me, let me write our i1 first. So we have 1 half times pi over 2, so pi over 4, plus one half natural log of two and then minus one and one half so minus one half and this is our answer hold on let me redraw my box so it doesn't go that's the larger box and also it overlaps and equal so i gotta redraw it here as well okay now this is a good box and yes this is our answer and, and as you can see, it involves a lot of tricks, which is pro which is why I'll probably put the word tricky in the in the title in the title. Sorry for for the unoriginal title, but well, I have to do it at some point. And well, yeah, did you did you really think I watched it? Really, really like share. Subscribe to this video. Bye.